Hello, everybody. Hi. We happy have- Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. We're back. We haven't seen you in a while, but it's we- It's been are- a little while. It has. We- we're excited. Yeah. And the question is always, why are we excited? Because we're always excited. And yeah. there are always things that we're doing. And we're excited today because the autumn 2021 issue just went live earlier today. So today, October 12th, if you're watching, as soon as the video came out, it's, well, the issue came out on October 12th, no matter when you're watching the video. But that's, that, that is the day that we're celebrating in this video, um, the day that the autumn 2021 issue went live and with it, all of these fundraising campaigns. So I should probably, we should probably introduce ourselves for people who are new. Yes, we should. Have. I am Sabine K. Bergman. I'm one of the co-founders. And I'm Savani Babu. I'm also a co-founder of Hidden Compass. And we are excited to introduce you to a new issue of Hidden Compass. It also means there are five new campaigns, which I think means we should tell you all about those because we probably do have some new people watching this video. Yeah, yeah. So we're different from other online publications in that every story we publish, we publish alongside a fundraising campaign. So we want to honor the partnership between uh, us as a publication, our storytellers and journalists, and you as readers. And so we give each of you the opportunity to contribute directly to our partnership. 50% of proceeds from campaigns go to us at Hidden Compass, so we can continue to do the work that we do. The other 50% go to each of the storytellers on top of their article pay. Yes, and we do that, as we mentioned, that we look at this as a partnership not just a partnership between us and our contributors, but also a partnership that very much includes you, our readers. So thank you to those of you who have contributed to past campaigns. We just closed out a set. We're launching a new set with this issue. You're gonna hear from these storytellers over the next few weeks. We'll get a chance to sit down in conversation with most, if not all of them. And you also get a chance to watch the videos that they have produced in conjunction with these stories, which will tell you a little bit more about what drove them to tell these stories. But, uh, but we're gonna give you a little rundown of what's in the issue. Like I said, we're thrilled at these stories. The theme this issue is called Riddles of Devotion. And, uh, and that's always a fun one. Yes, yeah, a little Alice in Wonderland feeling there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so Riddles of Devotion and like all of our themes for every issue, it fits each of the stories differently. Um, so it's it's a theme to keep in mind, and you'll get to see that theme play out in different ways. We publish five stories an issue and in five different departments. So we'll tell you a little bit about each of the departments. Which one do you want to start with? So, Let's start with time travel, because that's always a fun one. Yeah, I always like starting with time travel. <laughs> Who doesn't? Who doesn't like starting with time travel? Uh, right. But time travel stories for us are stories that take place in the past, the present, and sometimes the future. And they allow us to explore the relationships between these events that happen in different time periods. In this issue, our time travel story is called The River Has No Hair. It's written by J.R. Patterson, who's a Canadian farmer turned Europe-based writer. And Mm -hmm. in it, he sets off on an excursion down 440 miles of the São Francisco River in Brazil. And he's following in the footsteps of, maybe I should say the wake of, Richard Francis Burton. Who, yeah, footsteps in a river, not quite. Not quite. <laughs> That's <laughs> right, crazy. And, and Burton made this trek and explored the highlands of Brazil back in 1869. JR is in modern times following in his footsteps and learns a lot about the river and the region and also exploration. Yeah, yeah, it's a good one. And we also, I want to talk about our quest story next. Um, quest stories, you probably can guess what a quest story would be, but it's usually a narrator on some sort of quest, which is exactly what Laurie Napier does um, in Lines of Duty is the title of our quest story in this issue. Um, Laurie is a songwriter and a poet. She's written for NPR Berlin. Uh, she says that she travels with her cat, her notebook, and her acoustic guitar, which having seen her video and worked with her, is, is totally how I would picture Lauren traveling. And in this piece, she delves into a lot of different layers of history. Uh, she delves into the history of Camp Naco uh, and the Buffalo soldier, soldiers who served there, uh, but also into her own family's past. And there's a lot of evocative descriptions of this crumbling adobe outpost 
um, and some really profound uh, musings about how, how things have changed and not changed over the generations. Definitely. It's a, it's a powerful story and one that just like all of these that I think people can learn a lot from as well. Yeah. I also want to chat about our portrait story, which mm-hmm. is called Roots in Motion by best-selling Roots, author. Roots of Motion. Roots of Motion. Goodness. Yeah. Yes. Roots of Motion. Uh, and it's written by best-selling author, semi-professional dancer, and certified business coach, Megan Taylor Morrison, who travels to the West African country of Guinea to study traditional dance. Uh, and, and she's doing this because it has connections to a form of dance that's popular in the U.S. that she has a lot of experience with, but she's trying to understand uh, more Lindy about Hop. it. The Lindy Hop, that's right. And so she travels to Guinea and it's, it's a story about the power of dance and music and global artistic exchange. Uh, and it's, again, a very impactful story that exposes us to cultures and forms of dance that we might not know much about otherwise. Yeah, yeah, it's a good one. Let's do, let's do Chasing Demons next. Yeah. These are stories that delve into the darker aspects of a place or a narrator. Um, and our Chasing Demons story for this issue is The Weight of Paradise. Uh, and it's written by poet, scholar, and essayist, essayist <laughs> Shireen Sherard, um, who is the chair of the English department at Pomona College and teaches African-American and Caribbean literature. And she gets to bring in some of her literature nerd self into this piece, which I just love. It's about surfing and risk and race. And she draws from her personal experiences as a black woman, but also literary references from Jesmyn Ward and Toni Morrison. So there's there's personal narrative, there's surfing, there's literature, and then there's also paintings for this story, which uh, were commissioned specifically for the story. One of them was, and then um, the other one uh, we we pulled from the painters. Uh, what what would we call it, Siv? <laughs> Past works. Past works, yes. So the painter is Scott Denholm. Uh, he is a contemporary ocean artist. He's also a surfer uh, in Australia. Uh, and he also describes himself as a champion for marine conservation. And it was, I love working with artists uh, on stories. And so we got to really see uh, a different aspect of this narrative come to life through his work. Yes, and and I will say that these paintings are absolutely stunning. I mean, they're gorgeous, gorgeous paintings. And so I'm excited for folks to see those. So let's turn to our human and nature story. Mm -hmm. This one is, this one's a little bit fun too. The story is great, but also the journalist that we got to work with. So the story is called A Clearing in the Forest. We Mm -hmm. worked with London-based freelance journalist and photographer, Olivier David Guiberteau. And what's exciting for us about this is that we've gone back and forth with Olivier for a few years now. And so we are thrilled to finally actually get to publish some of his beautiful photography and Mm -hmm. this wonderful story. Um, His beats normally cover travel, sport, culture, and adventure. And this story combines a couple of those things. And Mm so it's a story about Shinrin Yoku or forest bathing and uh, and it and it's about his evolving relationship with the practice as well as with the forest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I'm really glad that we got to finally publish his work. And it that piece really it spans a really uh, eventful time in his life and all of our lives. So yes, yes. and um, I'll also note that that's our photo feature. So yes, there's there's some beautiful photography in there and and quite a bit of it because it is that story and the issue. Yeah. So you, if any of these stories called to you or all of these stories called to you, you should jump to our website, which is hiddencompass.net. Uh, and on the homepage, you'll see if you scroll down the newest issue, which just went live today, um, and you can delve into the letter from the editors, or you can go straight into one of the stories. You can explore the profile pages of each of the journalists. You can watch their videos, uh, and you should contribute to the campaign's uh, of stories and storytellers who move you. 
Definitely. And be on the lookout for our conversations with, with many of these storytellers over the next mm -hmm. few weeks. Those will be included in our newsletters, but they'll also be on our Facebook and YouTube pages or YouTube channel or Facebook page. So be on the lookout for those. And with that, we'll actually be back in a couple days. Yes. Because you're going to hear from us a lot this week because we have some exciting <laughs> stuff happening. Uh, yeah. We'll be back in, in multiple ways in, the, in, in two days. We'll mm -hmm. be back to announce ticket sales for our December Ethos of Exploration Talk. There'll be more on that soon. It's going to be an annual event. Our, our first speaker is Joel Sartor. We'll tell you all about it in a couple days. Mm -hmm. And we'll also be back to announce pre-sales for the Alliance, which you may have heard us alluding to and talking about in the last few months. And we'll, again, have tons more information for you on that. That's our modern society of experts. Finally, which we're Finally we get to really tell you about it. We've been working behind the scenes on this for a long time. So very, very long time. To invite you behind the curtain, so to speak. Yes. Um, and that will be on, on Thursday. And also we have an event for our speaker series that same day. Yes. Um, we'll be sitting in conversation with Mexico-based photojournalist Megan Dollywall for our October virtual speaker series event. Um, I'm really looking forward to talking with her about her work. She has been working with um, asylum seekers at the U.S.-Mexico border and has published work on family separation and so many incredible subjects. And we're going to talk not just about her work, but also about the media as a whole and being able to cover these complex uh, and complicated stories and subjects. Um, so you should buy a ticket to that if you haven't already. Uh, and if you have a season pass, you already have a ticket and you'll get it soon. You'll get your, you'll get the link soon. Yep. Get the link. Yes. yes. Well, ticket link. That's <laughs> your, your ticket is, is the link. Um, and you can hop on and, and watch that and we'll see you. We'll see you on Thursday. And in the meantime, dive into all the stories. We're really excited about this issue. And thank you so much for tuning in. See you later, everybody. See you soon.